What's up? This is David Benjamin with the Overweb Show. My compadre uh, PJ is here as well. PJ, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I go by FASA. Um, I'm a uh, definitely a, a digital ecologist at heart. I see the you know the world that we live in is uh, is becoming a, a very interesting place and. Um, you know, looking towards the future, like what, let's see what we can make happen. Yeah, absolutely. And so this, this overweb show is something that we're, we're just starting, we're trying out and its intent is to really be an educational thing, let people figure out, um, get to understand what the possibilities are for what we're calling the overweb, this safe, secure, space above the web page so pj wanted to just have you open this up and kind of give your assessment of, of where we're at with the internet right now yeah so it's really interesting when we uh i think a lot of people don't realize when we uh when we interact with the internet we interact with the internet as a two-dimensional space and um, I mean, if you've ever played a, like a Mario game, Super Mario and some of these other things, a two dimensional space is definitely a lot different than the games we play now where everything's three dimensional and you're moving in an immersive environment. Imagine if you were one of those characters in that immersive environment from like a, a game made in 2020, PlayStation 5, and then placing that character back into a 16 bit you know, video game console, that character would be constricted significantly. Um, the uh, increased dimensionality of uh, our experience as human beings isn't something that's represented accurately on the web. What does that mean? What does that feel like? You know, and, and we're experiencing it now. It's just the internet is extremely divisive. It's very constricting. It's almost a, a, a form of slavery. You know, if you consider your uh, digital self to be uh, an entity uh, for which you control, like you really are restricted in how you can move and transverse across digital space and time. And uh, some of that may be by design, some of it may be uh, just happenstance, but ultimately um, what I really like about this concept of the overweb is it's a, it's a representation of a web that could actually be free where people can, ideas, thoughts, um, our interactions and our engagement with uh, technology can be something that's more, uh, again, it's just the, the jump from 8-bit, 16-bit consoles to like a PlayStation 5 level uh, experience uh, when interacting with the web. And that's just something I'm pretty excited about. Well, <clears throat> we were talking a little earlier and you mentioned something about what happens when a multi-dimensional being needs to interact in the 2D space. You wanna elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, um, if a multi-dimensional being, you know, you figure you're moving across multiple axes and stuff versus a two-dimensional being where, you know, like Mario, it's left, right, you know, up, down, you know, that's, um, when we're on the web, that experience is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's the type of thing where we don't realize it, but it divides us into, uh, it divides us into sections. It, it, it puts us in a position where um, when we interact with information, that information is also two-dimensional, one-dimensional. It doesn't really feed us and inform us the way that we would want to be fed or informed if we were in a uh, an environment that was that had the same dimension uh, dimensions as we do. And that's what's interesting that like the, the, the web itself is flat. Um, and that's wrong. I mean, the world is not flat. When we discover that the world isn't flat, you know, that changed a lot of perspective and, and, and consciousness uh, in this world. And, and the internet shouldn't be flat either. Well, the um, internet isn't flat. I mean, if you actually right. look at how the internet is constructed, it, it's, it's able to have almost infinite layers. It's not a flat thing. It's just how we're actually using it. The tools that we use to access it force it to be flat. And what I what I think is really interesting, you had said before 
this notion that uh, we're actually slaves. Well, we, in a way we are, because when you go to say a Facebook or a Twitter, there's only certain prescribed things that you can do. We could list these things probably on, you, you know, <laughs> on uh, a, 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 maybe within dozens, there's a dozen different things that you can do uh, on Facebook, right? You can post, you can like and comment, you can, um, you know, post an event, but outside of those things, you can't do it. It's, it's like you're taking your multidimensionality and, and um, flattening it. We're, we're flattening the human experience into some very, very, a very, very narrow set of things. And what I, what I really enjoyed what you were saying earlier was that when you, when you take something multidimensional and you, you have to flatten it, it, it causes diffusion. It, it atomizes things. It 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 mm. splits and divides things, and that's what we see in the yeah. internet. Because the internet is so divided right now. Right. I mean, if if you just reminded me of something, uh, thank you for that. The uh, even like the fusion. It, it's the it, it's when something an area of uh, high concentration will always flow to an area of low concentration. If you take something that's three dimensional, which means that there's a lot more to it than a two dimensional, and you put it in a two dimensional environment, that's very consuming. That two dimensional environment will over time consume the value that is in the three dimensional uh, uh, object that's within it. So by nature, the web and the technology that we're using to, uh, to like you said, to represent the internet, it's, it sucks and it pulls away and it consumes <coughs> and it consumes the value that we bring into the web as opposed to, uh, you know, that the environment is supposed to bring us value. The environment is something that you're supposed to reach into and extract value from. There should be a meaningful exchange in any environment, in any uh, harmonious ecosystem. And we just don't have that type of relationship with the web. Yeah. Um, Another thing as well is, uh, and this gets a little into the weeds, but if you consider that um, all of your thoughts that you've ever had are stored in your brain in one place, but when you go into it, and it's because your brain can, you know, it can hold and store and interact with and engage petabytes worth of information at a time, because there's really no supercomputer more powerful than the human brain. I mean, Depends on where we're at with these quantum computers and stuff in a few years, but um, that's ultimately the rule of thumb. But when we go into the web, when we interact with the internet, do you access all of your ideas that you've ever had in your entire life every time that you go to the web? No, you use one. But you may go to the web at one point thinking, hey, I, I really, I'm really thinking about this uh, fishing. And then you might come back in a few hours and be like, hey, I want to go on vacation. And then you might come back another time and you might be like, hey, um, I want to check out this spa while I'm out because I've been really, really, those are all three different thoughts. But when you go on to the web, you're still interacting in that two-dimensional space. So there's no layers. There should be three, or four, th those are three different personas of who you actually are. Like I travel, I like fishing, and you know what, like I've been really, really tight and I could use a massage and I want to be somewhere. And, and these are all different things that, um, that that are different personas that they're not able to be represented on that web as well. They're, they're not able to be represented in a two dimensional space as well. There should actually be different layers. If I go in and as from, from a phishing standpoint, then I should be able to interact with the web in one way. But if I go in as a uh, thinking about travel, then I have very distinct variables and nuances to what I like and what I don't like when it comes to travel. And I should be able to interact with the web in another way, something that's very distinct and allows me to maximize that environment as it pertains to whatever subject or whatever reason I'm interacting with that environment. Yeah. If and you're going swimming, then you want the what you're thinking, water, water, water. But if you're going running, then you're thinking about something that you can run on and what that terrain is going to look like. Those are two different interactions with an environment, but the web, again, from a two-dimensional standpoint, 
it's almost impossible for us to really experience that dimensionality and that flexibility. It, it's just a very linear way of uh, experiencing uh, digital space and time. Yeah, and what's really interesting, even in how you describe that, uh, <laughs> it was kind of the notion of, of a person experiencing the web. And that's totally right on. But I would also go a step further and say it's also about how a, a, a participant ex experiences collaboration with other people on the web. I mean, I know that's not how the web works, right? Because on any given web page, if you and I both go to that web page, there's no way that we would ever know that we both went to that web page unless we had a conversation. And the, the, the trippy thing is that we don't really ever talk about what web pages we go to. I mean, I guess it's just such a mundane thing, right? So we almost would never know that we went to the same web page. Now, one of the things that the overweb enables is this notion of on-page presence. So it's this notion that I can go to a given web page, and, and if it's a page that I'm really into, I may decide to, to go visible. And if I go visible, I can then see whoever else is visible on that web page as well. And that means that all of a sudden that I'm able to, to um, see profiles of people that are on the same web page and I can uh, potentially reach out to them and initiate a conversation request. And if they, they want, if they've made their cursors available, maybe I can even see where they are on the page. And the, the cool thing about this is, of course, that you have the, the opportunity to meet someone that you would have no chance probably in, in, in 10 lifetimes to meet. It just, it just wouldn't happen. So uh, th that's really, I think, um, transformative. And then this whole notion of multiple personas um, with OverWeb, you have one over web account and it's there's no throwaway accounts so it's it's a safe digital space there's there's no no bots no fake accounts no serial abusers so you have one account but you can have multiple personas so i can have a ski bum persona persona i can have a fisherman persona i can have a sports nut persona i was having a conversation with my friend the other day about this and it's really illuminating when you have conversations with people around these possibilities. And what, what he was saying, he would like to know um, certain information about the, the people that come to a specific page that's relevant to that specific page. So if we're, we're talking about fishermen and we weren't talking about fishing, this guy and I, we weren't talking about fishing, but you know, since you're into fishing, uh, what I would ask you if, if you were a discerning person and you don't want to just talk to anybody who who um, who comes to the page about fishing, what do you want to know about that person that will help you understand whether they would be someone that you could actually learn something from? So, what what is what's the fishing? You, you, what are the attributes of a, of a of a fisher person? profile that you would want to know i mean i'm i'm imagining is you know something about the equipment uh maybe about something about where they they fished i don't know what, what would you want to know to be fair i use it as an example but let's dive into fishing i mean and that's what's really cool about this is that when we get a new idea when we have a thought the ability to dive in and understand more about ourselves like that comes when you have the flexibility to do so. But from a fisherman standpoint, you're right. Like, where would I go fish? I mean, if I were going to get into fishing or if I was getting started with fishing, which would be the situation for myself, then, you know, I would like to go somewhere where there's experts. I would like to go somewhere where I can meet other people that have run into a lot of the uh, similar uh, issues that I might run into as well. Um, I would like to whatever it is that I plan on fishing for, I'm sure that's a common question. Like, what are you trying to catch? Or are you trying to, is it catch release or are you trying to eat something? And what would be the best place to do that at? And, um, and then if I were going to do that, then knowing when the best time is to do that. I mean, there's, um, it's one thing when you're looking at something from the outside, but when you, when you dive into it, 
and you're no longer looking at it from a linear standpoint, you dive into fishing. There's all kinds of detail and nuance and, and, and connections and relationships that can take place that, you know, you're, that would happen in the real world. You know, if you're in the real world and you walk into a fishing shop and you said, hey, look, I'm really trying to get started fishing, that person would connect you with other people, with other resources, et cetera. But it wouldn't just be, here's a brochure, figure it out for yourself, which is very similar to what happens uh, with the web now. Go ahead. So I want to get really specific because this is the first time we've had a conversation about fishing. And as you said, with this whole over web, it, it's really great to go go specific. So where are you in your fishing journey? Where am I in my fishing journey? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering um, if you're a novice or are you an expert or are you somewhere in between? I would say that I'm a novice for sure. Okay. Okay, cool. So as a novice, you just mentioned a couple of different things. What I want to do, there's a distinction between things that you want to know, like as a novice, uh, things that you want to know that will help you become a better fisher person or, or, or help you uh, know where to go fishing, et cetera. And then there's other stuff that other things that you could know about someone um, that would enable you to understand if they're the ones for you to speak to. So what are the right. things that you're, that you're curious about in terms of fishing? Like you might be going to a fishing site to understand. Hmm. Well, I'm already, already. I think I would want, yeah, and I, I would think that I'd want to be successful, you know. So I probably want to, and I want to be safe while with whatever it is that I'm doing, you know. Not to say that fishing is a full contact sport or anything like that, but I would definitely want to. Nobody wants to go fishing and not catch something. So I think it's, you know, you want to get the right equipment would probably be the first thing that I would really want to make sure that, like, okay, for what it is that I'm trying to catch, do I have the right lures? Am I, um, do I have the right rod? Am I, is my technique the right way? Am I fishing in the right spots and the right locations to even catch whatever it is that I'm looking for? I would say that I would like to become have some level of expertise in the space of fishing, like a, at least enough for me to not be looking stupid out there. You know, I don't want to look like a novice. I don't want to remain a novice. I would like to, you know, to, to, to get better at something. I don't know if there's a fishing school that's out there, but, um, you know, that might be one of the first things I would do. In fact, I could also see, I could probably see myself going on to YouTube, to be perfectly honest, and trying to look up different things to find out, hey, you know, what information is out there for somebody that's just getting started with fishing that wants to catch swordfish or something? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm imagining you mentioned YouTube. What if associated with a given YouTube video, there were a group of people, fisher persons, who right. were holding AMAs, ask me anything, or you know, they're having office hours on fishing. They're on a popular video or, or maybe, maybe these, these uh, AMA sessions are accessible from multiple fishing videos. But basically this notion that you're going to a place where there is content around fishing and people can actually have an on-page presence. You go to that page, you see that they're there and that they're willing to have a conversation, uh, would that be valuable to you? Oh, that'd be great, you know, that'd be great because then I'd at least be able to validate that what I'm looking for is, or what I'm looking at, the information that I'm looking at is actually useful. That's one of the things about the web in a two-dimensional construct is that we go to web pages and stuff, but if we wanted to actually learn something, then, you better hope you were recommended to go there by an actual human being because with all these bots, I mean, as soon as I type in fishing into Google, I'm going to get attacked like piranhas when you jump into a, you know, when you jump into like a cool spring, you know, like it, it really becomes a, a, an issue to know if the information that you're looking at is even the truth or is it, is it fake? Is it legit? Is it, has it been helpful? Has it been this? And because there's the web is, the way it's currently constructed, something that isn't can be made to look like it is. Yeah, you know, what's really funny is I, I 
no pun intended, but clickbait. <laughs> right <laughs> right pretty much all this clickbait that's out there you know and, and and that's what's so crazy is that um so if i could go to a youtube video and actually talk with and somebody was hosting some kind of ama or like you know just kind of uh just there was more information there when i got there to let me know that i'm on the right track to know that after I leave here, where's the next best place for me to go? Something that could help to curate my experience. And then I can know if, you know, what kind of track am I on? Am I, am I becoming, a, am I still a novice? You know, am I going to catch anything? And then if I do go out and I do do everything that's on there, knowing that I have a community to come back to would be just really, really helpful in my opinion. Yeah. And I'm not sure, you know, given that you're a novice, I don't know if you know much about the fishing equipment. Are you, are you familiar with the top brands? And that's No, I'm not familiar with the top brands, but, you know, I'm sure that Google is. So I would probably Google the top brands and, you know, but, but if that AMA session was there, then I would like for, I, I don't want to just be advertised to. I would look for that human element, that, that, that human element is critical. Um, a lot of the products that go on shelves are basically the same product, you know? So you really gotta, it's, it's not even enough to know the brands. You almost have to know what has had a track record of being a good manufacturer because manufacturers have like probably several brands that, you know, uh, white label and private label their, uh, their stuff. So um, I, that's the type of person that I am whenever I go shopping, I, I'm not thinking about, you know, what is this product, you know, on a commercial? I'm thinking like, man, like who really made this? What are the ingredients that are in there? Is it gonna last? Does it work? Um, it's almost impossible to get to that information now with all the advertising that's just constantly attacking at every time. I mean, it's just it's very exploitative. And, and I'm the type of person, I, I hardly even buy things on online because I, I don't feel like it's really connected to anything that's truthful. I, I really can't trust the web the way that it currently is constructed. Yeah, I, I feel that. So let me go back to this, the, this um, line of thinking that we touched on a little bit before, but imagine that there's several people offering AMAs, maybe they're at different times, maybe they're concurrent. Maybe there's also another you know, 50,000 people that have come to this very popular fishing video over the last um, three months. And by the way, with on-page presence, depending on what settings people have, you can see their, their history of, of being on that page as well, if they're visible. So it may wow. not be that you were on the, the page at the same time, on that video at the same time, but uh, it, it, yeah, it could be that, that they were on there a week ago or three days ago and you're on it now. So you're able to tell that they were, that they were there. So what I'm saying is there could be many, many um, possibilities of people to reach out to. And what I was, when I asked you if you knew about equipment, I was uh, trying to understand if you would have the knowledge to discern what would be, you know, someone um, who, who would be knowledgeable or who would be using maybe the similar type of equipment that you aspire to use or something. So they would in fact be someone that you'd really want to talk to. And, and what I realized though, is, you know, since you're a novice and you're not that familiar with equipment right now, maybe, maybe you would look at the list and you'd see what people see, what people are. Like, so what I'm, what I'm imagining is that these mm. Fisher people are, all listing the equipment on their persona, on their Fisher person, uh, on their Fisher person profile or persona. They're listing the equipment they have. They list. They're listing where they fished. They're 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 saying whether they're most interested in catch and release or eating or whatever, as you mentioned earlier. Or maybe maybe that's actually a checkbox, right? You know, they right. Might might have expertise in, in, in these various different types of uh, fishing. And probably there's more types of fishing that I even know. I mean, okay, then fly fishing is another one that's in there as well. Uh, so, I'm the so what you're saying is that I could create a filter for myself technically, and I could see the, 
whoever I wanted to be present or whoever was present that I wanted to see, I could place the filter uh, using like my own profile, I could create a filter to be able to see who's present that fits this specific criteria on the page with me while I'm also watching this video with 50,000 people. Yeah, or 50,000 people who had come in the last three weeks. And right, right. The, the other thing is, so I'm imagining, yeah, you don't really know the, the um, you know, you're not able to look at the list of people and discern exactly who's the expert based on their equipment, but you could, you could look at the places that they've, um, they fished. And if those are near you, that might be interesting. Or if, or if they're varied, like let's say someone's fished all over the world. Well, that's telling you something. So that, that tells you something about expertise. The other thing, right. um, you know, the, the goals, maybe it's, it is really about um, the, the, whether it's fly fishing or catch and release or, or these other types of fishing. If someone has experience in all of them, that tells you that they're pretty experienced fishermen. But the uh, going further, you could go to Google and search for, or duck, duck, do, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and search right. for um, best, best uh, fishing equipment or best reel um, for a particular type of fishing that you you know that you're interested in they come up with two or three different brands then you come back to this list look at the personas and you do a filter for one or two of those or maybe even for a specific model that you know is supposed to be what the the, the top fisher people are using and therefore you're able to, to actually use that in a way that helps informs you wow to find the right person for you, whether you're a novice. You know what, you know what's really interesting about what you're saying, let me just interject for a second, is that that's the internet, that's the web as a tool. You know, I, I feel like if, we, if there was a spectrum between asset and liability, we're, the, the web right now is leaning to liability. In my opinion, it's starting to lean because you, you have to deal with all of these security threats. You got to deal with these bots. You have to deal like what you're talking about is it's not just increased dimensionality. That's even better than the real world in a certain respect. When we're talking about I could I can now filter through people using technology as a tool, as an asset for myself to make that happen. Um, that's that's a powerful thing. It's a very powerful thing to be able to do that, to be able to say, this is who I want to have access to me. I don't want people to have access to me that don't know what they're talking about. I don't want people to have access to me that know what they're talking about, but it's not related to what it is that I'm talking about or what I'm trying to see or what I, because I, time is money, time is time, time is valuable, time is all these things. And I don't want to waste it. And what stops me from wasting it is the opportunity to be able to have more sovereignty over my experience whenever I'm interacting with uh, when I'm interacting with the the web. It's a really interesting thought. Yeah, what's interesting as well is you're you're speaking on this notion of where the value is, where this the value exchange is with the web. And as you said right now, you you said it was a liability, but um, let's. Another way of framing that is that the, the value is actually going to the system. And there's this, this concept of the technium is Kevin Kelly. And Kevin Kelly was wanting to understand what is technology's place in the universe? What does technology mean in our lives? And also another thing that he was looking at is what does technology want from us? And, and as it turns out, the web is now structured in a way where technology is getting what it wants and the value is going to the technology as opposed to we getting what we want and the value coming to us. So it's, it's right. really powerful dialectic, right? You, <laughs> right now we're, we're in this, this, this ecosystem, this two dimensional ecosystem that in a way enslaves us to do prescribed actions, which is what technology wants. We do what technology wants. We become the product. It, it extracts value from us. 
and in in a way we we may get a little bit of what we want we want connection we want belonging we want knowledge but all those things that we want we're in a way thwarted i mean like on web pages we can't connect we can't have belonging um it in terms of knowledge well there's not really much in the way of knowledge knowledge on the web um that's kind of, that's unequivocal and easy to discern because there's right. so much noise out there and 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 what I, what I'm seeing is that that the the way that we're viewing the internet is not only flat it's not only static but it it's it's not only abstractive and it's one other thing what is it it's oh. Let me let me just sit with this for a second. Um, I think I'm 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 losing my I lost my thought. No but worries, I'm, no worries. I mean, I think what you're saying though is that the world isn't flat and the internet shouldn't be either. You know, like it's just the like especially if we want for people to have a an enriched experience whenever they uh, when they interact with it. Um, so it's definitely an exciting thought. And what's crazy, I mean, we're not just talking about fishing, obviously. I mean, if, if somebody was on here and they cared about beauty and they wanted to really understand themselves better as it pertains to beauty, then they would they would need to have an environment that would provide the, the, the multiple contexts that's necessary. They would need to be in an environment that allows for them to extract value from it in a at their own pace when they're ready for it like what good is it if i go to a page and you're trying to sell me on something and you're so focused on selling me on something when i'm just doing research right now i'm actually just i'm trying to learn more about the product but every word that's coming out of or every every piece of content that i'm accessing because it's being thrown at me is treating me like a consumer when that's not the value that I want to get from it, you know what I mean? I mean, like the worst thing is when you walk in someplace and you know somebody's all up in your face trying to sell you some shit. You know what I mean? Like that's not, uh, it doesn't even feel good. It's not healthy. Instead, like you kind of, you know, you ignore that person and then you look around and then the person that, you know, the salesperson that kind of watched you and waited for you to get to a place where you needed help, then they come over to you. Like that's the real world. Nobody wants something in their face all the time nobody wants <clears throat> imagine walking into a store and you've got somebody they have this big sign in front of your face and that's all you can see is that sign like that's an annoying thing I, let me look let me walk through the store let me browse let me you know let me exp that's the whole point of a browser let me browse you know what i mean let me browse for a little bit let me see what i need to see let me browse deeper and with depth and with and with dimensionality i'm not just looking at the surface of this thing i'm gonna i'm gonna pick it up I'm gonna squeeze it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look behind it. I'm gonna read the tag. I'm gonna do some things. Like people don't just want to be treated like consumers. You know, the people need the time to 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 digest things, and, and people need. Sometimes we need help doing that. You know, so sometimes it's like, hey, can you, uh, you know, can you flip that mattress around so that I can see it? You know, what's going on on the bottom of it? You know, or hey, can you, uh, you know. You know, how well does this stove rate, you know, as it pertains to gas or electric usage or something? What's the voltage of it? Like, like just there's depth to life. And the, and the web is, I mean, you're lucky if you can get that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen at all, but you're lucky if you can run into something like that. And, and when you start talking about health, when you start talking about things that are a lot more important than fishing, then I think that the stakes become higher you know like you start if you advertise to somebody and they don't have the the thought pro that you know that they, they might not have a process maybe they're just a very quick buyer you know we live in a microwave society and, and they end up getting something that they're not happy with but you sold it to them so you made money if that's what the measurement of success is going to be then i just think we're in a, a <laughs> that's a slippery slope i'll just say that much if, if success is that you got somebody to buy something but they weren't necessarily satisfied with what they bought or they didn't get the utility from whatever it is that they made a purchase from or, or or the information that they were trying to gather they wrote a paper on it but that paper wasn't as good as that paper could have done could, could have been because uh the information that they found 
was only they only the only reason they were able to find any information on is because of SEO. So it was it was that, that's that, that's all I'm getting at is that the web right now treats everybody like a consumer and it values um, putting something in front of somebody instead of uh, valuing that what is in front of somebody is what they actually want to see. Yeah, it's, it's, oh my God, <laughs> that what you just said is actually what I was getting at earlier. So not only is the web, you know, as we as we're viewing it through these quote unquote browsers, is it flat and static, but it also treats information and people as commodities. So the information on the web, its only value is the extent to which it can change your behavior. I mean, that's how the technium sees the sees the information. It's not that the information is intrinsically valuable in it being knowledge and you're being able to use it for something that actually transforms your life. No, it's value is the extent to which it can get you to do something. That's where the values is, is in information. And that's why it's okay for it to be in silos. And then actually, if it wasn't in silos, if it was all connected, then the, the technium would have a much harder um, it'd be much harder for it to extract all that value from it. So um, I was thinking if you have some closing thoughts that, you know, we might um, both have some closing thoughts and um, close up this first of the over web sessions. Um, yeah, no, just, uh, it's exciting to be here. It's exciting to be living in this time. Um, I think that this is something that is, uh, it, it's, it's something that needs to be addressed. I mean, we're, you know, we live in a world where automation and, and, and technology, there's, there's a lot of jobs that are going to be, uh, I think, lost to technology. And we got to start thinking about um, how can we create more space for new opportunities and stuff and for new ideas and new innovations and stuff to take place. And if we continue to look at a web from a two-dimensional standpoint, I think that um, we won't have that diverse pool of thought that's necessary for us to, uh, to create a, a bigger and wider future for, for future generations. And, and even for this generation, I mean, technology moves fast. And I, I just really feel like um, if we wanna create space to, to, to solve these problems that we have, then we need to, you know, we need to stop thinking as consumers. We need to start thinking about value. We need to start thinking about the environment. When we talk about human-centered design, you are a product of your environment. And the web and technology in this digital environment that we've created is a type of environment that's turning us into something. And we really have to think about what that is. We really need to think about, do we want to be two-dimensional? Do we want to think in a linear way as people? Because it's happening. It's happening. You're seeing a lot of just, you're seeing just, there's just a lot of shit. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, uh, having an unhealthy relationship with technology. And, um, you know, why not start with the web? It's like the biggest hunk of data you know, chunk of data that exists on the on planet Earth is it is in the internet itself. And we need to stop seeing it two dimensionally and recognize that, man, this thing is an environment. And, and, and instead of being squeezed for everything that we've got to, to get into it, we need to have space to breathe when we're in there so that we can start to think about uh, what happens next. That's it for me. Yeah. And I'll just end it by saying that as rich as this conversation was, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the overweb. We could talk about any subject and it would be new for us, right? I mean, we, we never talked about fishing together. I didn't know you were a novice fisherman and, and I could actually go way deeper. We could talk about a fishing digital nation. We could talk about on page interactions and how you might use smart tags, like the, the conversation smart tags to ask a question, uh, you know, to these, these expert and, and, other, and other, other fisher people. So the, the, there's this possibility of, of going really deep and, and exploring how technology can actually work for us so that we will be able to actually um, 
focus on some of the the really important things that need need to change on this planet and we're on a on a self-terminating course at the moment and we don't have to be in you know inshallah we won't be um forever but at the moment we are we need to recognize it and we need to make a change in my perspective it, it starts with the internet um really it starts with the self but our our technologies as you said earlier they they shape us we make technologies we invent technologies they reinvent us and the easiest the most straightforward way for us to move forward is not for everyone to be meditating eight hours a day you, you know that would probably make a huge difference it would you know in many different ways if we if we were really able to get in touch with ourselves and and know ourselves i mean that could that is the most important thing i mean not eight hours but let's say everybody meditated two hours a day we we'd live on a different planet but that's not easy that's not easy to to, right. to happen but we can change the internet they keep telling us we can't they keep telling us that that it's it's got to be the way it is and that we can you know make little changes here and there and you've got all these different um not all these but there are groups of people that are focusing on fixing the internet like Mozilla and others. But invariably, when I, when I see what happens in these spaces, they're, they're talking about how to have a successful startup. And they're saying, you need to focus in on one little thing um, and do that really, really good so that you can then, you know, become great, carve out a space, get a bunch of users, get traction, and um, then get VC money. And ultimately, uh, you know, most of them, they want to get bought out by a Google or a Facebook or something like that. And so the, the machine, you know, once again, gets its needs met. But the, the problem with that, that when we're just focusing on little tiny things, I mean, obviously, huge things can come out of something small and we see this with a seed right so this little tiny seed is encoded such that ultimately it can become a, a mighty tree but there's also the forest so <laughs> i guess when i'm, I'm i just want to close out by saying that thank you fasa and uh you know for your brilliance and for engaging with me in these conversations and we'll be continuing these you know if we get good response i'm i'm asking any of the folks that that made it to the end i mean what did you think about this experiment was it useful did was there anything in this that that resonated with you were did what we say make sense did did you did you get it um we don't know these are these are new ideas that some of them are new for us like i said around fisher people um we don't really know because it's it's the it's so new and um we just want to understand if if this is in fact providing value for people if there's something that um in particular was valuable let us know if there's something you think we can change let us know because you know if this is valuable then we'll be doing it on a regular basis if it's not valuable then we'll be looking to get the information out in some other ways i want to also mention that uh, for those of you who are still with us there is going to be an over web challenge on january 21st it's to hack our own uh notion ideas of what the the web can be will be and uh, we're, we're basically going to be creating a container where uh, you can come together with with uh, teams of, of, of other curious people and explore where the internet could go in a particular industry a particular endeavor uh, not the internet the overweb well yeah the internet the overweb same thing right um, it's just that people don't really recognize the overweb yet but yeah I think it's 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 to create yeah. space yeah go ahead no i was just gonna say like that's another thing is that we're not talking about doing something that it's already there like the overweb is actually something that actually already exists like people are already multi-dimensional people already use the internet for a number of things it's just the environment 
itself has never been represented the way that it actually should be. So we're not talking about reinventing the wheel. We're talking about, you know, putting air in the tires, making sure the wheel isn't flat anymore. You know, it's just a different thing. Yeah, well, we can end right there. Once again, uh, thanks. And if anyone has any, any comments, thoughts, suggestions, recommendations, who should we speak to, let us know. We're trying to make this thing, this place, uh, make it work, make it work for us, create value. Signing off. Peace.